Yes! What is up, everybody? Welcome to Ricardo Pepe's favorite podcast in soccer. We trust. Is that too soon? It's probably too soon. I'm here, Jimmy Conrad, Conrad Nino, Jim Cream Chase Trash Can. I'm in shock right now. I'm in with Hollywood Heath Pierce. Charlie Chuck Wagon Davies is going to show up when he wants to show up. And the roster for the U.S. Men's National Team has officially dropped. And there are some big surprises, Heath Pierce. Do we just want to start from the back and work our way hey, to the front? Where, where hey, do you want to go? I'm literally getting a call from Eddie Johnson right now. And Eddie Johnson called me out. Literally, he's calling me right now. He called me out about the Ricardo Pepe thing, obviously, in comparison to him. But him being left off the roster to me is, <laughs> I love that, uh, by the way. Uh, uh, is, is a huge deal. Uh, but there's so many other players that I think are big deals of not making this squad. I think there's a lot of mystery uh, to me on what's going on. So, yeah. Where do you want to start, Jimmy? Well, let's just start with the goalkeepers. Okay, so Matt Turner in, Ethan Horvath in. Jimmy, do you have your Jimmy? Do you have your Do you have your volume on in the background? Because I think I, I can hear I can hear. I don't. Sound. I don't. I don't. I, I would maybe, I it's, maybe have, it's on the production side if, the, if if it's not muted. There we go. I think wherever it was, it's gone now. Well, whatever um, it was, I, yeah. it's probably like giving us insight that we should be listening to. Because <laughs> I know. Greg That's Berhalter the is still on stage distracted. talking right now. Yeah. But but let's start with the goalkeepers. Yeah. Zach Steffen is out, everybody. He yeah. started six World Cup qualifying games for us, and he's out. And yeah. we know that he's healthy. So I feel like there's some backstory here that maybe, mm -hmm. and I'm speculating, but how do you not have that guy included at all? He just disappears. And he just goes from being a number one to a number four. Like, I don't, there's got to be some backstory here. I get the sense that maybe there was a conversation that was happening between him and Greg about who is the number one. And Greg said Matt Turner. Yeah. And Zach said, maybe that's not hit for him. We saw this before with Brad I, Friedel and Casey Keller. Yeah, but this is like, these guys are young, Jimmy. These guys are young. And, 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 I, and it boils down to me. There is a purpose to everything that Greg Berhalter is saying right now. He was asked a double-barreled question, which I think is not fair uh, at any point. But he said, we like our goalkeepers. We trust in them right now. That was his answer to why is Zach Steffen not here. And then he said, Ricardo Pepe was a really hard conversation to have. So he was willing to approach the Ricardo Pepe question and talk about why he, like, you know, the conversation that he had to have directly, it was, it, was, it was referencing him. And the other one was referencing the other players. And he didn't go into Zach Steffen. And I can't hear what he's saying now, so maybe he's gone back to that. And they've, they've leaned into that. But then Jermaine, Jermaine followed up with saying, these, these guys have been one and two, right? Now, is this a suggestion now that, that Matt Turner is number one? And he said, yeah, he's leaning towards number one. But he avoided, again, this idea that, like, the mighty have fallen. This was the guy that until Matt Turner or until he wasn't playing and had some injuries, was the number one. There wasn't even a conversation about Matt Turner versus Zach Steffen for a very long time. Right. So Zach Steffen's importance can't be sort of under undervalued uh, in this process. But to go from one to four, that's a little bit shocking to me. So I'm, I'm curious as to what, what is happening there. And I know that the media in England has been hard on Zach Steffen and his performances, even though you know he's coming off of a shutout and he had a 1-1 draw over the weekend. Uh, but still, to fall that far behind an Ethan Horvath or 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 Sean Johnson, to me, is a bit bizarre because it feels like maybe you've wasted opportunities to get Sean Johnson more games I or agree. to get Ethan Horvath more games over the time to know these guys are international ready. Yeah, for me, Horvath, in some ways, is probably our number three because Sean Johnson actually got one of the friendlies in our last six friendlies against Uruguay, and he made right. a couple of hell of saves to keep us in that one. And and so and, and uh, he's been solid for NYCFC. And he, he, he's got that clutch gene that I really like. He steps up and, and makes big plays when he needs to. So I'm not scared to have shocked? Sean Johnson. Are you I, shocked? I, I'm shocked that Zach Steffen isn't in because we have dedicated so much time to him. He does tick a box that Greg likes. You have a ball-playing goalkeeper who, yes, I feel like he made that mistake for Man City in the uh, U.S. No, no, I almost called it the U.S. Open Cup. The FA Cup for May, you know, in the semifinal, mm -hmm. and, and that led to a goal, ultimately led to the loss for City. And he took a lot of heat for that. Yeah. And then ultimately made a move to Burrow to to now take continually take more heat. The, the expectations on him feel a little extreme at times. But he's, uh, if you mean, want to he's be, coming from Manchester City. I get it. 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 And he's also the number one at that time for the U.S. So you got to be lights out in every yeah. single facet of the game. And he just seemed to be lacking confidence. But it's one of those things. We've had this conversation before. When your players are not feeling confident, isn't that the time to put your arm around them? And say, hey, actually, I do believe in you. I think you're capable. And now it's like we've backed away completely from Zach Steffen. Like, peace out, buddy. Thanks for everything. 
And, and he's, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, but but it's, it's not even a confidence thing, Jimmy. He's playing. It's not like you can't be a goalkeeper and be not confident. You might but not I, be in the best form of your okay. life, but he's playing every game. I'm not and he saying was benched him. And he came back. I'm saying our, our the confidence of the coaches in him. Okay. Let, yeah, yeah. let less sack and more our, our confidence in him, or at least our coaching staff's confidence in him. So, yeah. I, I are we dumb, Jimmy? I'm are surprised. we dumb? Are we dumb? Are you and I dumb? Because we spent all of our time talking about who's the third goalkeeper. And Zach Steffen wasn't even in the conversation because he's been a part of it. And I don't believe that anybody for what they did. And when Greg Berhalter again said, uh, Josh Sargent played in the Premier League last year, like that was last year. That was last right, year. Right, 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 right. What does that have to do with this year? Is he scoring in the championship this year? Yes, he is. Does that warrant him to be called into the national team and potentially make the World Cup squad? Absolutely. But what does last year have to do with it? Right. What does last year have to do with it? Like that, yeah. when I hear those kinds of things, I start to think, wow, we are willing to, and, and again, I think Josh Arden should make the roster. So, but I'm, but I'm, I'm picking apart words that I had an opportunity to hear. And one of that was last year, Josh Sargent played on the worst team in the premier league last year, playing against it. players that were far better than what does that have to do with this year? And right now, and if that's the case, Haji Wright's in form, Ricardo Pepe's in form, Jesus Ferreira, not in form well, right now. So, so, and so we're deciding, we're picking and choosing right. current form versus historical implication versus Son Sean Johnson, who's been part of the part of it all since day one. And I believe when I look at some of these decisions that Greg has made, it just feels like he was trying to save himself for having to make tough decisions in tournament. Because what if Matt Turner has an absolute stinker against Wales as our number one? You would most likely go to Zach Steffen against, against England. But instead, you just rule out that possibility. Okay, Ricardo Pepe doesn't start. But there's going to be this clamoring for. I, I don't understand why these two guys in particular are not on the team. It just it really blows my mind. Yeah. And and it just I, I'm trying to under maybe there's some backstory. I'm hearing that Ricardo Pepe might have had an injury or whatever. There's going to have to be something because I just don't understand it just for at face value. I, I really don't. Mm -hmm. And then obviously Zach Steffen not being involved is, is is still somewhat mind blowing to me. Yes, he he has his faults, but I think if we nitpicked all of our goalkeepers, we could find something. But just given. How, I mean, he played with Greg at Columbus Crew. Like, they have a long history. That must have been one of the hardest conversations that Greg had to give and also for Zach Steffen to receive because I just, what? Yeah, it, it feels it's, like it's, Zach Steffen is a year out from his peak like, or his best form. Find, finding home, you know? Mm -hmm. And I go, actually, I actually go back to, now this is a different story, but Tim Howard, when he went to Manchester United, really struggled to settle in, right? I remember that. And it wasn't until like our big American goes to Manchester United, he's starting. And then the booze started, right? And then the mistakes started. And then it became like this guy can't play soccer type of like criticism. Goes to Everton, bring, puts Everton into Europe, has a consistent career there, ends up being like the him, him, Tim Cahill, and I think one, I can't remember who else, were the three highest paid players at the club, earning massive wages, being the leaders of the team as players come in and out, and really finding that home where you can rely upon, where you go, okay, right now it's, it's we're like juggling, right? Matt Turner not playing, probably our best goalkeeper right now. Zach Steffen playing, but not in the best of form. Then you've got Ethan Horvath playing consistently, but not at the level that we want, you know, in terms of quality that we want from these guys. And so that's like a flip of a coin of who makes the team, but to not make the squad, I, I'm just, uh, yeah, I keep, every time I get to the end of my thought, I just keep going, oh yeah, but he still didn't even make the squad. So there's gotta be something. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's incredible. And I assume as more time passes and as the world cup comes and goes, we'll probably get more insight on what's happening with Zach Steffen and potentially Ricardo Pepe. And, and I wonder if these guys come out and kind of share their story. Ricardo Pepe turns 20 in January. So obviously he could be looking ahead to 26. You don't want to burn that bridge, but Zach Steffen might be <laughs> ready to torch it because <laughs> we got Gaga Slonina coming in behind. And obviously he has uh, got a bright future after signing with Chelsea from the Chicago fire. Now he might and probably will go out on loan, but uh, his upside is tremendous.